Welcome to the three episode series of how to solder a patch bay. First, I'll talk about what patch bays are, why they're important and how they work. If you already know all that, skip to the second episode where I begin the soldering process. Alright, to get started, there are two main types of patch bay, quarter inch TRS and bantam TT. The soldering work done in this series concerns a bantam TT patch bay, however the process is exactly the same for quarter inch. So, what are patch bays? Well, in a nutshell, have you ever seen a telephone switchboard? That's a patch bay. In fact, the TT in Bantam TT stands for tiny telephone because those are the same cords they used to use for the switchboards. Those switchboards connected one caller on one line to another caller on another line and the operator would plug in the cords and patch you through. Right. Notice that on most professional 19 inch rack mount gear, such as the Neve 1073 or the DBX 1046 compressor, the inputs and outputs are on the back. This is because the creators have designed it for use with a patch bay, and they don't expect you to be unplugging and replugging in frequently. Patch bays allow you to accommodate this. Now, patch bays allow you to connect all the inputs and outputs of your studio gear to a single unit with which you can route any input to any output using a patch cord. Other routing capabilities include normalin and half normalin, which will be discussed shortly. The only real difference between quarter inch and bantam patch bays is that bantam jacks are smaller, and so bantam bays can hold a maximum of 96 jacks. The largest 1U quarter inch patch bay I've seen yet can only hold 56. Along with that, Many quarter inch patch bays come in jack to jack format with normal and half normal switches and this requires more jack ends than a solder format patch bay, evidently. Alright, so, with any solder format patch bay, on the back of each jack you get five solder terminals. These are normally laid out as such. Two terminals on the right and three terminals on the left side. The bottom two terminals on the left side represent hot and cold normal connections and the top terminal on the left side is the ground. We'll cover more on that in the second episode. The two terminals on the right represent hot at the top and cold at the bottom. So, in case you're wondering what normal and half normal connections are, I'll explain. A normal connection is usually made between a top and bottom jack in a patch bay by connecting the top jack's normal terminals to the bottom jack's normal terminals. This means that whatever signal is flowing to the top jack, which is usually a unit's output, will flow to the bottom jack, usually a unit's input, without having to patch any cords in. A normal connection does however mean that as soon as a patch cord is plugged into either the top or bottom jack, the natural flow created by the normal connection is broken, and the respective input or output will flow down the patch cord instead. A half normal connection is one in which the top jack or outputs hot and cold terminals are connected to the bottom jack or inputs hot and cold normal terminals. A half normal connection when set up like this means that when a patch cord is plugged into the top jack the signal flow between top and bottom jack is unaffected and a copy of the top jack signal flows through the patch cord. When a cord is plugged into the bottom jack however, the connection between top and bottom jack is broken and the signal to the bottom jack will flow through the patch cord and overwrite that input. Half normal connections are handy for things like copying the direct out from a mixer to send to a processing unit to monitor while still recording the original dry signal. Cool, so now you know the theory, we can move on to episode 2 where we begin soldering all the terminals. Mm -hmm.